بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In our Ulum al Umran approach, our goal is to study the process of social change. This change occurs in all dimensions of society, and in this section, we will study some dimensions and some aspects of this change. In traditional agrarian society, land was the source of power and wealth and status, and the aristocrats had uh, were the landed nobility. But the industrial revolution led to increasing importance of commerce, trade, production, and eventually the wealth generated by this commerce overtook the wealth of the landed aristocracy, and this led to major changes in society. Traditional society had aristocracy and peasants, but in the new uh, society, we had uh, a capitalist class which uh, produced and uh, imported and exported and traded and acquired an enormous amount of power and influence in the society. The success of this class depended on the creation of a labor class, and this class was itself, it had its own ways of thinking about the world and consciousness and this also became a powerful force in driving the society. Karl Marx analyzed the interaction between these societies and argued that the capitalists exploited labor in order to create surplus, which was the source of their wealth. And this exploitation was bound to continue under the dynamics of, of capitalism until the workers were so exploited that they would be forced to revolt. And uh, his solution was to make the capital owned publicly so there would be no capitalist class and this would create justice and equity. As the society changed, so did the analysis of the society. The ideas about what governs economics also changed. And one of the key contributions of Karl Polanyi is to analyze the birth of economic theory itself. And what he has to say is that economic theory was born in this period of social change and all of the great 19th century economists are analyzing a society which is in transition from a tra traditional society to a capitalist society. And so they are caught with a uh, um, analysis which was obsolete because it analyzes a structure which is a temporary transient set structure which is the struggle between the uh, ancient ways of thinking and the new ways of thinking. The dimensions of this change also played out in the religious dimension, which is analyzed by Max Weber. How did capitalists come to believe in the pursuit of wealth? Um, he says that the Protestants believed in predestination and therefore uh, work could not contribute, any good deeds could not contribute to salvation because it was already written. And they thought of worldly success as a sign that uh, one has been saved. So they worked to achieve prosperity, acquire, accumulate wealth without actually meaning to use that wealth for luxury in this world. And so this is what he calls the spirit of capitalism, the accumulation of wealth without any intention to use it for the pursuit of pleasure that comes from wealth. So this actually, this uh, strange and irrational spirit where one accumulates wealth without having any purpose for this accumulation, because wealth is seen as a symbol of uh, salvation, uh, something explicitly denied in the Quran, by the way. Uh, this is what led to capitalism, because it led to the accumulation of wealth, and that led to the dynamic uh, increase in the capitalist economic structures around the world. One of the concepts of Weber is also called the iron cage. He said that the way of thinking that this represented to accumulate capital without having any purpose for this, this way of thinking continued 
people were locked into this way of thinking even though they lost faith in religion. Tony also pursues the same line of thought as Weber and analyzes the changes in religion through this period 16th to 18th century and he shows that religion was central to all human pursuits in 16th century but in the 18th century it was marginalized to a personal belief system. The social norms of the market society replaced Christian religious norms. So how did this happen? The process is spelled out in Tawny but the key indicator of the change is that the biblical saying love of wealth is the root of all evil was replaced by uh, Bernard Shaw's statement that lack of wealth is the root of all evil. So this was a great change in the ways of thinking that occurred due to transition from a religious traditional society to a modern market society. So we can conclude by noting that social transitions are complex and multidimensional as we have seen. Uh, the famous parable of the elephant and blind man tells us that each blind man captured one aspect of the elephant but they couldn't put it together into a coherent picture. And similarly, um, if we look at all of the dimensions together then we can get a coherent picture of social change. And this is an illustration of the multiplexity theory of Rajiv Shanturk who has argued that this idea of multiplexity, Maratibul Ulum, is characteristic of Islamic epistemology. And one of the key problems with Western theory of knowledge is that they reduce the multiplex worldview to a uniplex worldview. And he has argued that decolonization of social sciences requires us to go back to the multiplex uh, view of Islamic epistemology. In particular, one of the problems is that when we think of economics as a scientific theory, then it's either true or false. And so there is only one theory. So all of the diverse perspectives that we have I've been discussing in this lecture, they just get lost. Is it true? Is Marxism true? This is just a wrong way of looking at things. When, when we look at uh, social theories, they represent different perspectives of looking at a complex phenomena and they complement each other and they allow us to understand different dimensions of the social change process. سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين